Well, uh, welcome back to my um, uh, my kitchen. Um, the uh, main difference this time um, is that um, my wife's comment on the last one was that um, that lampshade um, made it look like a, I had a, um, a fez. Um, so, <laughs> so I've moved the camera around slightly. Um, what we're going to talk about today um, is is the Nehru. Um and this is something that's uh, <clears throat> that's been causing um, causing some some difficulties. Um, I've been thinking a bit about. Uh, how, how best to do it. Um, and what I'm going to do um, is try teaching it um, this time um, via a model. Um, there's a model that I learned um, at university um, and it was, it was taught to me by a guy called David Soskis, um, although he, he developed the model alongside um, someone called Wendy Carlin, um, who's, now, who's now quite big at, um, at UCL. And I mean, it was all a very long time ago. Um, so, so it's not. I mean, I don't know how well how well I truly remember it. Um, but I think I remember it well enough, you know, to to, to get the sense of it across. Um, and and I think you'll find that. Um, I think you'll find. Well, I don't know. Um, I hope you'll find that this gives you an alternate view of you know an alternate view of the narrative. Um, so, so maybe it makes a bit more sense. Um, let's. Let's start by outlining um, what, what I think we already know, um, which is well, what it stands for. Um, it stands for the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. And I think it's important to break that sentence up. Um, so um, the, the pause kind of comes in the middle. So it's the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. In other words, it is the rate of unemployment the actual rate of unemployment, yeah, at which inflation will neither accelerate nor decelerate. In other words, if unemployment, the actual rate of unemployment, is at this level, inflation won't be going up and it won't be going down. Now, that's not to say that inflation will be zero. And um, you know, what we're saying is that whatever the level of inflation at the moment, um, it is going to stay at that level. And I think, I mean, I think the, the way we did it, you know, the way we did it, um, in class, I think is you know, is we try to look at this um, intuitively, and we said, well, look, suppose unemployment is very, 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 very high. Yeah, um, under those circumstances, you know, workers are. You know, we we looked at it through the wage price spiral, and we said, well, look, you know, workers are you know, in, you know afraid of losing their jobs, and they know that you know, they know there are plenty of people who want to do their job um, instead of them. Um, there's a, a mass of unemployed workers. And they also know that um, if they lose their job, then they're probably going to, you know, they're probably going to be unemployed for, for a very long time. Therefore, they're very unlikely you know, to be um, pushing for pushing for for pay increases. On the other hand, if unemplo unemployment is very, 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 very low, in other words, every, basically everybody has a job. Workers know that they're in a very strong position to push for pay increases, and therefore wages can increase, and that will put upward pressure on prices. And the idea of the NERU is there must be somewhere in between where the balance between workers and firms is, you know, is equal in some sense. Yeah? So, in other words, um, firms can't force down wages, but, but workers can't, can't push them up um, significantly. So, so that, was, that was the idea. And, and what we're saying is that, yeah, and, and again, looking at it another way, um, if we just switch a minute to the idea of to the idea of full employment, I mean full full employment. I mean literally, yeah, you know, is yeah you know, everybody has a job, and we know we know that realistically, basically, if we were to try and achieve that, we'd have lots and lots and lots of inflation. So, and the reason for that yeah, is that we're going to run out of yeah you know, we're going to run out of, run out of skilled workers. Um, certain regions of the economy um, are going to overheat. We know that unemployment up in the northeast is you know, probably twice as high as it is down here in the south. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to run out of skilled workers long before you actually hit full employment. So the Nehru is saying, effectively, how close can you get to full employment? How near can you get yeah, before, before, inflation, before inflation starts to rise? And in an ideal world, if you could get it working, yeah, if you could get it working exactly right, in an ideal world, the Nehru would be zero. In other words, you could go, you could increase aggregate demand and go all the way to full employment without inflation rising. 
But we know that for all sorts of reasons, once unemployment gets down to certainly you know, 4 or 5%, inflation starts to rise. And that's because trade unions are powerful, that's because we run out of skilled workers and firms have to compete for skills and so on. Yeah? So that's so the Nehru kind of is showing you know, those people who are you know, that, that core of people you know, who, are, who are very difficult to employ, they're difficult to, to get jobs for. And once you start trying to do that, labor costs you know, start, start to rise you know, um, as, as workers are able to push for um, higher and higher wages. And that's, that's another way of looking at it. So if the Nehru is 10%, what that means is that you, know, you can increase, yeah, I suppose you're in Spain and unemployment and unemployment's 23%. You can increase aggregate demand and unemployment comes down 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, that's all fine. But the nearest you can get to full employment before inflation starts to rise is 10%. You can increase demand further and get unemployment down to 9, 8, 7, 6. But by doing that, you'll be running out of skilled workers. And as a result, wage rates will start to start, start to accelerate quite quickly, as a result of which you'll get inflation. If the Nehru was only 3%, then you'd be able to, again, if we were Spain, we'd be able to go 23, 22, 21, 20, increase demand further, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, still no inflation. Yeah, um, because for whatever reason, we'll come to that in a minute, for whatever reason, it's easier to, to get closer to full employment. In other words, maybe we have a better skilled workforce or maybe trades unions are weaker so that so that they can't push up wages. And we can get all the way down to three before inflation starts to rise. So a low Nehru, in other words, a Nehru close to full employment, what that means is that you have greater policy flexibility. You can get closer to full employment just using demand side policy. So another way of looking at the Nehru is that it shows you the limits to the effectiveness of demand side policy. You can increase aggregate demand until you reach the Nehru, but if you increase it further, what's going to happen is you're going to start to get you're going to start to get inflation. If all of that is now clearish, then good. Um, what I'm now going to try and do um, is illustrate things um, using using this model that um, that Soskis and uh, that, that I learned from David Soskis. Um, and um, we're back to my um, high quality um, high quality visual graphics here. Um, um, here it is again. Um, so, sorry about that. Um, so, right, okay, so what we got then um, um, is the way, the way Soskis and Carlin saw it yeah, was they said, well, okay, let's suppose that, yeah, let's suppose that this is the real wage. Um, and let's suppose that this along here, oh, rats. Um, oh, Let's suppose that uh, let's suppose that this along I'm not doing very well here, am I? Um, I'll, I'll make it higher. Um, let's suppose that let's suppose that this along here um, is the level of unemployment. Um, so what they said is, well, let's look at what wage what wage increase um, workers can actually get. Um, and what they said is that when, you know, that's basically full employment, unemployment is 0%. At this stage, workers would be able to get a very, very high real wage increase. They would be very powerful, trade unions would be in a very strong position, workers wouldn't be afraid, um, and so on. Down here, yeah, then they probably can't get, you know, when unemployment's up here at, say, 30%, yeah, you can't get any pay increase at all, and, and probably by then, um, you know, you, the worker the firms are pushing down um, pay increases. So what we get is we get a relationship that looks like that. Um, and what Soskis um, and Carlin called this um, is they called it the bargained real wage. They said that's what's actually going to happen, the bargained real wage. That's what's actually going to happen in the labour market. Yeah, that's what yeah, that's that's what workers will be able to force through, yeah, and, and given a, a certain level of unemployment. So this isn't a demand curve or anything. It's just saying that if unemployment is at that level, workers will be able to get a five percent pay increase. If unemployment's at that level, workers will be able to get a you know two percent pay increase. Yeah, so the higher unemployment, the lower the wage increase, the lower the wage increase. Yeah, that um, workers are going to be able to workers are going to be able to get. What he then said is, well, let's look at what firms can afford to pay. What pay increase can firms afford? And what they said is, well, that's probably based on productivity. Suppose productivity rises by 2% a year. 
Suppose each worker becomes 2% more efficient. Well, at that stage, we could pay them a 2% pay increase, we could pay them 2% more, and our costs would stay exactly the same. If, you, if I give you 2% more money, but you work 2% harder and produce 2% more units, then there's no impact on my costs. And he said, well, that's the level of pay then that we could easily afford. And they called that the feasible or possible real wage, yeah, which we'll, I'll just write that in there, the feasible real wage. So the way they saw it then is they said, right, well, suppose unemployment is here at U1. Workers can, are only powerful enough to get a half a percent pay rise. But each year they're becoming 2% more productive. Effectively, what that means then is that I'm getting 2% more out of you, but I am becoming, um, but, but I'm only paying you half a percent more. Your wages are rising by half a percent, you're 2% more productive. What's going to happen is that your costs, my costs, the costs of production, are effectively therefore falling. And therefore, that's going to put downward pressure on inflation. Yeah, so what we can say is that you know, at, this, at this level here, and yeah, we're saying that you know, costs decrease, yeah, therefore there's downward pressure. Therefore, there's downward pressure um, on the downward pressure on the price level. Yeah, and that's what's going on. Because productivity, you're becoming 2% more productive, but I'm only paying you 1% more. Um, over here, we've got a different story. So over here, yeah, where unemployment is, um, is U2, you're still 2% more productive each year, because we're just assuming that that's constant. Yeah? We're just assuming that um, each worker can become 2% more productive. But I'm paying you a 5% pay increase. What that means now is that I'm paying you 5% more, but you're only 2% more efficient. In real terms, my costs have gone up by 3%. Because I'm paying you 5%, you're making me 2% extra, but really, therefore, my costs are higher. So what we can say is happening at U2 yeah, um, is costs are going up by about 3% in my example. Therefore, that's going to put upward pressure um, on the price level. And of course, what that means then is that yeah, there will therefore be rising inflation at U2 because wages are rising faster than productivity. There's falling inflation at U1, and the Nehru is therefore here. At this point, wages are rising at exactly the same rate as productivity. So there's neither upward pressure on inflation, which there is here, nor downward pressure on inflation here. And that shows how close we can actually get to full employment before inflation um, will, start, will start to rise. I think that's a different way of looking at it. And if we think about some of the policies that we talked about, suppose that we were to make, suppose that we were to make unions weaker now. Yeah, so suppose what we did yeah, is, we, is we weakened trade union power, um, we made it harder to go on strike, um, yeah, that, that type of thing. What that would do is it would mean that at a given wage rate, At a given wage rate, yeah, um, it's now harder for workers to get a pay rise. So what that would mean is that whereas before you used to be able to get that pay rise, now you can only get that one. Here, you used to be able to get that, now you can only get that. So what's going to happen is the whole of this bargained real wage function is going to shift down to BRW2. So... When unemployment used to be there, that used to be the point of balance. But now, workers are much less powerful. Productivity still rises by 2%, but we can only get a half a percent pay rise. So we can now reduce unemployment to here. We can now reduce unemployment to N2 before inflation starts to rise. Because it's only when unemployment now gets down into this zone that wages are rising faster than, um, rising faster than productivity. So... In short, then, um, in short, yeah, um, the productivity, sorry, the um, the narrow just shows how close you can get to full employment um, without without inflation rising. Obviously, 
in an ideal world, you'd want to get that down. Um, you'd want the nair root to be zero. That would be perfect. Um, in order to do that, you have to prevent. Yeah, you, know, you have to. Uh, it, what has to happen is it has to be possible for aggregate demand to rise without upward pressure on inflation. And we said what that means you have to do is to weaken that wage price spiral. Um, in other words, you have to make it harder for inflation to get started. And you can do that by weakening trade union power. You can do that by weakening employment rights. Um, you can do that by toughening competition between firms in product markets you know, to make it harder for that, you know, for that spiral to get going. You know, and if you, if, you remember, you know, if you remember the wage price spiral, and if you just write it out, um, what we're saying then is that that's how inflation, you know, that's how inflation gets started. Yeah, um, and you know, um, if you can stop this process from getting established, then it will be easier to get to full employment before inflation starts to rise. So that was our, you know, that was um, that was our story. Yeah, um, cost of production. So, so for some reason, uh, this is hard. Uh, um, wages rise. Yeah, therefore the cost of production rises. Therefore price levels rise. Therefore the, uh, therefore the cost of living rises. This is hard doing it backwards. Um, therefore workers ask for higher pay rises. So if you can one stop this part of the wage price spiral, nah, stop this part of the wage price spiral here by weakening trade union power then wages don't go up, so then the cost of production go, don't go up, so then prices don't go up. Or if you can tougher, toughen competition between firms in the product market, then even if the cost of production goes up, you know, firms can't pass it on to consumers because they're facing too much competition. Any of those things makes it harder for inflation to get started. Therefore, you can, get, you know, you can increase aggregate demand and get the economy closer to full employment um, without, um, inflation, without inflation starting. And as a result of that, that makes the Nehru lower. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, pfft. I mean, in the end, it's not it's not critically important. Yeah. I mean, if if at the end of this, yeah, you know, all you understand is that the Nehru shows some sort of limit to how far you can increase aggregate demand, then that's that's probably fine. Um, we also argued in the other video, yeah, in, the, in other lessons, that the Nehru is the point to which the economy will self-stabilize. Yeah, which yeah, which yeah, we can see the other one for for details of that.